Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Sitaram Harihar from the Department of Genetic Engineering at SRM Institute of Science and Technology. Here in this video, I'll be showing you how to perform an MPT assay to check for cell viability. So MTT assay uh, is a widely used assay to check for the effect of different drugs, different toxins and other compounds on cells uh, to, to identify whether any of these compounds are lethal and at what concentrations we generally use the MTT assays. So the principle behind MTT assay is very simple. Healthy cells or live cells will have healthy mitochondria or intact mitochondria. And therefore the enzyme, the mitochondrial enzymes are active and they are able to metabolize the compounds to their uh, products, any of the substrate to the product. So dead cells or unhealthy cells, their mitochondria also will be unhealthy or, uh, uh, and as a result, the mitochondria will not be, the mitochondrial enzymes will not be there to metabolize a substrate to its product. So here the substrate that we use for this assay is uh, MTT. Uh, which is a dimethyl thiazole diphenyl tetrazoleum bromide. Now this is an yellow colored water soluble dye. And uh, the product that we will be checking for the formation is the formazon. Okay, so if you see here, uh, healthy cells will be able to easily metabolize MTT and form these formazon crystals because their mitochondria is also healthy and they have active mitochondrial enzymes. The dead cells, or unhealthy cells will not be able to do that because of the lack of intact mitochondria. And as a result, the mitochondrial enzymes also will not be there. Okay, so the MTT assay kit is designed to determine the cell viability based on this particular principle. So MTT, the uh, enzymes, the mitochondrial enzymes will be able to reduce this MTT substrate to the pharmazon product the pharmazon product is actually having a purplish color and these are crystals. And once solubilized with DMSO, these can be checked for using an absorbance reader uh, at 570 nanometers, you can check the intensity of the uh, purple color. So healthy cells will be able to form more pharmazon crystals because their mitochondria are good. Unhealthy cells or dead cells will not be able to do that. So if you look at this image here, so on the left-hand side, you have these two columns, which are all blanks. Now blanks do not have the cells. They are just there with media and they are there to be able to understand uh, the effect of any of these reagents on the assay. So whatever value we get in the blanks, we are going to negate it. And the, in the middle two rows, you have the controls. Now the controls, if you see here, they, see a, they show a nice purplish color. Now this indicates that their mitochondria is good, healthy. The mitochondrial enzymes are working. And as a result, they are able to metabolize MTT to form pharmazon. On the right-hand side, you see the treatments. The treatments, you, different concentrations of the drug may have been used here. Now, as you see, this is the lowest concentration of the drug. And as you go up, the concentration of the drug is increasing. Now, as the concentration is increasing, you can see that the ability to metabolize MTT is reducing. So if you'll see at the topmost uh, two regions, the two rows that you see here, the two wells that you see here, uh, they are not able to metabolize MTT to pharmazon. So the color is yellowish because the substrate, all you see here is the substrate. Whereas at the lower concentrations, you are able to see that the MTT reagent is being reduced to the product, which is the pharmazon, okay? So this is the basic simple principle for MTT assay to check for the effect of a particular compound, drug, or a toxin on the ability for it to be lethal to a cell line. So what are the materials we need for performing an MTT assay? So in this assay, we will be using A549 cells, which are the lung adenocarcinoma cells. These cells will be plated in a 96 well plate. Now we'll be using 10,000 cells per well. So each well will be having 200 microliters of cell suspension. So this 200 microliter cell suspension will be having 10,000 cells of A549. Then we have sterile tips, micropipettes, MTT reagent, PBS, and DMSO, because we need to solubilize the pharmazon crystals, and then only they will be uh, suitable to go ahead and measure their absorbance. 
Then you have, we'll be using Triton X100 at, at a concentration of 0.01%. Triton X100 is a detergent, and this is used as a positive control just to make sure that our technical setup, everything is working fine. And our drug that we are using for this particular study is quercetin. And we are using quercetin at four different concentrations, 0.1 micromolar, 1, 10, and 100 micromolar. And then we are going to incubate the cells, which are the A549 cells with quercetin at these different concentrations for 24 hours. So we'll start first by preparing the cell suspension. So we'll be adding uh, 10,000 cells per well. So each well will be having 10,000 cells and the volume of the suspension that needs to be added to each of the wells is 200 microliters. So basically 200 microliters of cell suspension carrying 10,000 cells will be added to each of these wells. So we'll start doing that one by one. So the topmost row is blank. So we are not going to add any cells or cell suspension to the topmost rows. The following rows, we are going to add our cell suspension at a concentration of 10,000 cells per well in 200 microliters of media. So this will be followed one by one. So first, the topmost row is the blank. So there is no cell suspension. Following that up, we are, we are having duplicates of positive control, our vehicle control, and then uh, the triplicates for our different treatments with quercetin. So once that is done, we are going to incubate the plate at 37 degrees for 24 hours for the cells to attach. The next day after 24 hours, we will start giving the treatments. So the blank, uh, there are no cells over there. The positive control will be treated with uh, Triton X100. And then uh, the quercetin will be added at different concentrations in different rows. So, and all of this is done in triplicates. So after that is completed, again, the plate has to be incubated for 24 hours so that the drug takes its effect on the cells. So right now we are adding the drugs which is the quercetin uh, at different concentrations. So each concentration will be there for each row. So once that is completed, the plate is going to be again incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. Okay. So after mixing well, incubation is completed. Now after 24 hours of treatment, now we are removing the media. So the media will be removed from all the wells. So any floating cells, all of that will be taken away when we remove this media. Now this is done one by one to all the uh, wells. So doing that one by one. So you can see here, one by one, the media is being removed. So now already 48 hours have elapsed from the time we have seeded the cells. 24 hours for cell attachment, then treatment with quercetin at different concentrations, and then another 24 hours for the effect of the drug to take place on the cells. And then after that, we are taking the plate out and then we have removed the media. And then we are going to now add 100 microliters of PBS to each of this well. So 100 microliter of PBS will be added to each of these wells. Now, after that is done, we are going to add the MTP reagent. Right now we are adding 100 microliters of PBS to each of the well. So 
So both all the blank, the controls, the treatments. Then we are going to add MTT reagent to the wells. Now remember this needs to be done in the dark because MTT is light sensitive. So we are going to add the MTT reagent in the dark and then after addition of MTT reagent, we are going to incubate the plate for three hours at 37 degrees and then solubilize the crystals that are formed with DMSO. Then after that is completed, which is around three hours. After that, we are going to take the plate out. Remember the plate has been wrapped in aluminum foil just to prevent any effect of the light on the MTT reagent. Now after incubation with the MTT reagent and solubilization with DMSO, we remove the plate. You can see that you may see the nice Farmazon crystals and uh, they have been solubilized. Now we will measure the absorbance for the treatments, the controls as well as the blanks. Now we are preparing the format for our plate. So we have the blanks and then followed by controls as well as the treatments. Uh, we are setting up the reaction you can see here at 570 nanometers. And then once that is set up, we are going to place our plate over here. Then we we'll go ahead and we are going to take the readings. So see one by one, we are see getting the absorbance readings for the blank, the controls as well as the treatments. Now we're going to transfer all of them to an Excel sheet. So the readings that were uh, received have been tabulated and you can see here on the left hand side you have quercetin at different concentrations 0 0.1, 1, 10 and 100 micromole. You have our vehicle control which is there is no quercetin over here and then you have the blank. The OD values are there here in triplicates. We have taken the average OD and then we have negated the value of the blank from the control absorbance readings as well as the treatment absorbance readings. And then finally, by using the formula, we can calculate a percentage viability where optical density of test divided by optical density of control multiplied by 100, you get the value of percentage viability. Now you can see here, uh, when there is no treatment uh, in the vehicle control with no quercetin, the percentage viability is 100. But as the quercetin concentration increases, the percentage viability drastically drops. Now you can use this to plot a graph. So basically in this graph, you can see the effect of quercetin on cell proliferation. Uh, so different concentrations of quercetin on the x-axis, the absorbance values or the OD values on the y-axis, you can see the effect of quercetin on the uh, cell proliferation. Now you can also plot the percentage viability on the y-axis and the concentration of quercetin on the x-axis. You can see here easily like at no quercetin treatment or in the controls, the percentage viability is the highest indicated by this orange blob that you see here. And as the concentration of quercetin increases, the percentage viability is drastically dropping. So this can be used to calculate the inhibitory concentration or IC50 value. The IC50 value is nothing but the concentration of the drug at which 50% of the cells are dead. So this can be used, MTT assay can be used to calculate the IC50 value for a particular drug on a particular cell line. And this will be useful to carry out any further assays using that particular drug. So I thank you all for your attention.